Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and the final video in the Properties and Structures of Matter series. This one's kind of bringing together a few of our little ideas about bond strength and also to link bond strength with chemical properties. So we were looking before at the bonding spectrum. It's one of the ones that uh, one of the things that we looked at in one of the earlier videos when we were looking at the span from ionic to polar covalent uh, to pure covalent compounds. And this continuum or spectrum we looked at on the basis of differences in electronegativity, where we have pure covalent compounds where the electronegativity difference uh, is zero and ionic where the difference is a maximum and our cutover point sort of sitting somewhere between 1.8 and 1.5 that's kind of a number so we've kind of got a bit of an understanding about these sorts of things we also know when we're making comparisons that the hardest substance that we know of the one that has the highest melting point and is the most difficult to break is diamond and diamond is a carbon-carbon covalent network. So that's, that's the top. That is the strongest type of bond that we know. In carbon, it's a network. There are no discrete molecules. So there is no opportunity for our um, any sort of component of this structure to be any weaker than any other component because all of the bonds are equal, equally strong in all directions. A substance like sodium chloride sits next on the line. It's an ion-ion network. So we have the um, sodium cations and the chloride anions, and they're surrounded in all areas. And again, there's no weakness here because all of the bonds are equally strong. Sodium and chlorine and uh, attracted to other sodiums, other chlorines in all dimensions. No weak spots here. But the melting points are not as high as they are for diamond. So therefore, our ion-ion network actually sits back a little bit from the top of the um, ladder. Now, we've got metallic bonds in here as well, and metallic bonds will also differ a little in terms of their strength. We know that some of these actually melt at quite low, and so they would sit in this spot in here. Um, other, other metals have much higher uh, melting points. So the metallic kind of spans a little range and it's, it's difficult to kind of pin it down to a particular spot. But if we had to put it in, we'd probably just pop it into this little gap between the hydrogen bonds and the ion-ion networks. Now these ones up here are all the chemical bonds. And the problem when you are examining physical features is if there are only chemical bonds uh, between the particles, then the chemical properties can actually um, be discussed in a similar sort of way to those of the physical properties. For the other three, of course, um, we have physical bonds or we have intermolecular bonds. So these are physical bonds. The weakest of these is the dispersion forces. These are the weakest and the strongest of our physical group are the hydrogen bonds. All of these rely on electrostatic attraction. It's all about the attraction between positive and negatively charged particles and the strength of those charges is what determines the strength of each of these bonds and that's why it's important that we have a bit of an understanding about how the spectrum looks when we're making all of these different comparisons and they're going to be useful when we analyze compounds later on but how do we link these chemical bonds to the actual ways in which different substances react in chemical reactions so obviously, the intermolecular forces are closely linked to physical properties. The um, properties that include uh, conductivity, that include melting, boiling points, uh, luster, malleability, hardness, all of those sorts of things are very much linked to these intermolecular forces. But substances react on the basis of 
often what is happening to their electrons. Focusing in on the electrons is really important in chemical reactions because what happens to them, where they go and why, can tell us a great deal about the reactivity of a particular substance. Does the structure of different substances affect their reactivity? We've made some um, chemicals out of the Molymod kits to give you a little bit of a look at the way that some of these substances bond together. We know, for example, how water molecule bonds together and how a methane molecule bonds together in more of a tetrahedral arrangement than the cross that I've drawn here. But what happens when we have uh, a double bond, such as in ethene? What we have here is a concentration of four electrons, and this makes it very unstable. And so we can make some predictions about what's happening um, for a substance like this by having some understanding of where the electrons are, whether they're being shared or whether they're locked up in ions. And if there is a high electron density that would be more stable or that would make the molecule more stable if it actually split apart. Reactivity is a very important uh, property of substances. And in fact, it's such an important property, it's going to get its own topic a little bit later. So we're going to leave this series on properties and structures of matter right there. And hopefully you'll get a chance to have a look at a few more reactions and think about what's happening with the electrons when you do. Thank you for watching.